Hello, my name is Tom Eager. I work for the Forest Health Protection Staff of the U.S. Forest Service in the Rocky Mountain region. Right now, we're on the Divide Ranger District of the Rio Grande National Forest in Southern Colorado. The Rio Grande National Forest is located in the South Central Rocky Mountains. The Continental Divide comprises much of its western border. The forest surrounds the San Luis Valley of Western Colorado with its eastern boundary in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. These are the headwaters of the Rio Grande River that flows to the Gulf of Mexico. The Rio Grande National Forest comprises roughly 2 million acres of public lands that range in elevation from 7,500 to 14,000 feet. As with all national forests, these public lands provide many functions to the people of the region, including water, recreation, wildlife habitat, grazing, and timber. Because of the wide range and elevation, there are a number of distinctive cover types in these high elevation forests. On the Rio Grande National Forest, roughly a third of these lands are found in the spruce fir cover type. This is the cover type that many people think of when they think of Colorado. It comprises a broad band from north to south in these high elevation forests. One of the distinctive features about this cover type is the very short growing season. For much of the year, these trees are essentially shut down due to the extreme conditions in these locations. Nevertheless, Engelmann spruce can get quite large, having lifespans of several centuries. 250, 300, even 400 year old trees are not uncommon in these forests. Since 2005, the headwaters of the Rio Grande have gone through a severe mortality event resulting in the loss of millions of mature spruce trees. The culprit for this mortality is the spruce beetle, Dendroctinus ruffipennis. It's hard to believe that this tiny beetle is responsible for such great changes in the forest. At these high elevations, this beetle goes through a two-year life cycle. Spruce beetle typically have a two-year life cycle. In some cases, there are one-year cycles, but recent studies conducted on the Rio Grande National Forest confirms that two-year cycles are the norm. The beetles emerge early in the alpine spring, sometimes as early as late May, but continuing on through June into early July. The beetles seek out new hosts, with the females at attacking first and attracting mates. The release of pheromones attracts large numbers of beetles, which act in concert to overcome the tree's defenses. The beetles construct galleries beneath the bark and lay their eggs, which hatch out later that summer. The beetle larvae feed on the nutrient-rich phloem beneath the bark and go through several molts before the onset of winter. They pass the winter in a kind of suspended animation before becoming active again the following spring. They complete their life cycle going from larvae to pupae to adults and then pass yet another winter beneath the bark. The following spring, the beetles emerge from the host to complete the life cycle. Unlike pine beetles, which turn their hosts a bright red within a year's time, spruce beetles change the color only slightly. The foliage turns from a subtle green to gray, and then just as the beetles emerge, the needles drop off the tree. This has great impacts on our ability to track the course of the beetles' activities through the forest. Spruce beetle can be seen as sort of a Jekyll and Hyde insect. Most of the time, they exist in the forest at low population levels and act as scavengers, feeding upon broken tops, blown out branches, and damaged trees in the forest. From time to time, large wind throw events occur, providing the beetles with virtually unlimited food supply. The beetles are able to take advantage of this unlimited food supply and can build their numbers up rapidly. The beetle population can increase to the point where it reaches critical mass, and at this point the beetle population is able to spread out in the forest and attack and kill otherwise green healthy trees. The spruce trees seek to defend themselves largely through resin production. This resin serves as a physical barrier to the beetles. The trees attempt to push the beetles out of their initial galleries. It is a contest between tree and beetle. 
At low population levels, trees' defenses are suitable to overcome the beetles. But in an outbreak situation, beetle numbers can overcome their host defenses. There is a direct correlation between the amount of water and the tree's ability to produce resin. That is why we often see beetle outbreaks occurring during times of drought. The trees are simply unable to produce enough resin to protect themselves from the beetle. I previously mentioned the subtle color variations that occur during beetle attack. Unlike many other host tree situations, spruce trees do not show a great sign of attack in the foliage. The foliage stays sort of a gray-green and stays that way until the needles fall off just about the time the beetles emerge. In order to determine whether a tree is under attack, it is necessary often to walk up to the base of the tree and look at it to look for the boring dust. When we do surveys in the forest, it is necessary to have ground crews looking at trees, counting them, and keeping track. Other signs of beetle attack, especially woodpecker activity, aids in survey. But by and large, much of the data is produced by aerial detection surveys. These surveys are conducted on an annual basis. Observers go up in the air and attempt to document what they see going on the ground below them. This forms a basis for following patterns from year to year for a number of organisms. Here you can see some of the activity that's occurred over the past decade or so on the Rio Grande National Forest. If we split out the spruce beetle activity, we can see that over time it has become a huge event and has come to dominate the other damaging activities that are occurring on the forest. Following the results of the aerial detection survey work from year to year, we can follow the slow and exorable march of the beetles across the forest. Starting this series in 2002, a drought year, we follow the beetles until 2011. While the majority of the drought event occurred in 2002, note that it takes several years until 2005 for the beetles to really start showing up across the landscape. The origin of the outbreak is the western part of the forest, where wind throw events in the Weemanooch wilderness fostered a large beetle population that kept moving eastward. Aerial detection survey tries to track only the current mortality, so when we add up a series of year surveys, we can depict cumulative mortality. A total amount of mortality which adds up to over 250,000 affected acres. I need to put this 250,000 acre figure in perspective. Keep in mind the poor showing of spruce beetle damage and the fact that it takes at least two years for the damage to even show up. Undoubtedly, more acres have been infested and it's just a matter of time for this damage to be revealed. Also, the beetles are starting to move on to other forests. Widespread beetle activity has been reported on the Gmug forest to the north. I'll be giving that talk at the Society of American Foresters meeting in just a few years. This chart depicts a comparison of annual mortality and cumulative mortality due to spruce beetle on the Rio Grande National Forest. Yes, it's derived from aerial detection survey and therefore it represents only a portion of the current mortality. However, the important point here is the shape of the curves. As of 2010, both annual mortality and cumulative mortality were both pointing upwards. Bark beetles are labeled as a pest because they like the same types of trees that humans do. Dense stands of big old spruce trees. Bark beetles attack only mature trees, and we can rate a stand's attraction to bark beetles through a process called risk grading. The schmidt fry risk grading system uses the stand factors of tree size, tree density, stand purity, and site quality to determine the risk of spruce beetle. It is difficult to obtain stand density information from GIS-based data. This map depicts spruce stands on the Rio Grande National Forest based on tree size and stand purity, both factors which support spruce beetle activity. 
This map depicts the root of the situation. Forest stands with little age, size, or species diversity. This condition approaches a monoculture and is a situation that is ripe for spruce beetle activity. So, does this situation depict a resilient system? What is the definition of resiliency? Here is a definition used by the FAO and found in the Dictionary of Forestry. Resiliency is defined as the capacity of an ecosystem to return to the preconditioned state following a perturbation, including maintaining its essential characteristics, taxonomic composition, structures, ecosystem functions, and process rates. This was the definition that was put forward by C.S. Holling in 1973. Dr. Holling, by the way, is a forest entomologist. Will the spruce stands of the Rio Grande National Forest return to the pre-outbreak state following this intense, large-scale perturbation? Well, I guess the first question that comes to mind is, has this ever happened before? And the answer is, we simply don't know. This rotation started long before humans kept records on such things. Some of these trees are well over 300 years old. But we do have some evidence that can help us get to the answer of our question. Spruce beetle and Engelmann spruce trees are co-evolved. The distribution of spruce beetle and Engelmann spruce are identical. In fact, this relationship is symbiotic. Spruce beetle is the disturbance event that clears away the old spruce stands and prepares the way for the next rotation. Furthermore, if the spruce stands on the Rio Grande National Forest exists in a monoculture-like situation, how did they get that way in the first place? We also have more recent evidence. That's recent from a spruce tree's point of view. It comes from the first documentation of these stands in the early 1900s. A.D. Hopkins made a visit to the Central Rockies and recorded the impacts of spruce beetle on spruce stands there. He documented large spruce beetle outbreaks and the subsequent fires that followed. These fires remain a mystery. Current thought discounts the impact of fire in spruce fir stands. There is clear evidence that such fires did occur, but how did they start, and under what conditions? Here is a map produced by Hopkins during his visit to the West. It is remarkably similar to current maps of spruce beetle geographic range, even showing where outbreaks were most impacting spruce stands, except he did it with pen and ink from the back of a horse. So, will the spruce stands of the Rio Grande National Forest return one day to their former glory? Of course, the wild card in this is climate change, but that's another talk for another time. I think that given the evidence, we can probably say this is a resilient system, that someday these spruce stands will return to the Rio Grande National Forest, but it's going to take an awfully long time. Perhaps the more important question is, what are the social implications of this large outbreak? What will the spruce beetle outbreak due to the outputs that humans value from the National Forest. And what will this outbreak do to the long-term plans we have for these public lands? I'd like to share just one more observation regarding the magnitude of this spruce beetle outbreak. We have previously mentioned that spruce beetle is a pest of mature spruce. And here are some locations that demonstrate the beetle's preference for older trees. Note the younger trees in the foreground while the older, non-managed stands in the background show signs of heavy beetle impact, the younger trees in the foreground are green and healthy, right? But this outbreak has been so intense, the numbers of beetles so large, that in the latter stages of the outbreak, these young, small trees have succumbed to beetle attack. The beetles aren't making a very good living. Brood production is minimal but they attack out of desperation, and they kill what we had once counted as advanced regeneration. The spruce beetle outbreak on the Rio Grande National Forest points out the value of forestry to a sometimes skeptical public. Forest management could have lessened the impact of the beetle. 
and it offers hope for the future as well. From the manual, Silvix of North American Trees, we find this statement regarding Engelmann spruce and the potential for management inputs in these stands. With prompt restocking after timber harvest and periodic thinning to control stand density and maintain growth rates, growth of individual spruce trees and yields of spruce fir stands can be greatly increased and the time required to produce the above volumes and sizes reduced. By increasing age class and species diversity through management, the impact of the beetle could have been lessened, at least in certain portions of the forest. And so, this is the mantra, if you will, of the forest health professional. Increase diversity across the landscape.